Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, playfastfootball.blogspot.com. Today we want to talk about simple package concepts. And some of these are ideas that we've already kind of talked briefly about in, in some previous videos and blogs. And what I want to do is put a couple ideas together so that you can see what package concepts are. And, you know, really our thought process is how we can have a couple concepts packaged together so that in our up-tempo offense that we are working in, we can have some plays that can handle situations and, and feel like we can call plays relatively fast without concerning ourselves with the particular look that the defense is in. You know, you have two different versions of no huddle offenses. You have a no huddle offense that's going to be more of a check with me system, and then you have a no huddle offense that's going to be an up-tempo, you know, ultra-fast, lightning-fast offense. When I first started doing no huddle stuff, I was a check with me guy. I was constantly looking at the front and looking at coverages to see, you know, what plays I could run and, and, and trying to call the plays that I really liked against certain looks or certain coverages. And as I went through that and started experiencing some things, what I started finding out was in high school football, a lot of the times you're playing public high school football with the cards you're dealt at your school and you're playing certain other schools. And if the talent is really um, dramatically different, sometimes calling the best play into certain fronts or coverages really didn't matter as much if the talent on the other side of the ball was that much better than yours. And, you know, in the area I was in, the district I was in, we would be playing anywhere from 15 to 20 Division I defensive players each year. We'd be playing real good defensive ends, or we'd be playing real solid inside linebackers or corners and safeties that were Division I you know, BCS, SEC, ACC type players. And what I found out was when we were running our check with me system, a lot of times we'd have good plays called. You know, if we were an option team, maybe we had midline called at the three, or, you know, we were running, you know, zone at the shade we wanted to run it at, or we were running counter away from, you know, uh, away from a technique that we wanted to run it away from, or we were throwing, you know, flat schemes or, or flat routes into quarters coverage to the field and we felt like we were calling some good plays based on the looks we were getting but the other players were so good that they just minimized the success of those plays by simply being way more talented than the talent that we had. Now when we played equal talent the check with me system was great because we felt like we were calling good plays into good looks and we felt like we were keeping our kids out of bad situations. Okay, but in high school, more often than not, the talent isn't always even. You know, you don't have a draft, you don't have recruiting, you don't have free agency, you don't have trades. So you're stuck with talent at your school and you have to go and play other schools. So after that, we, you know, we really liked the no-huddle system and, and I liked everything about it. So about two years into it, I really started looking into more up-tempo football. And, you know, with up-tempo football, a lot of the times you're not really concerning yourself with certain looks that you're getting on certain down and distances, what you're really trying to do with up-tempo football is you're trying to generate tendencies and, and enough information and data throughout the week that you feel like you know what you're going to get, but you're not waiting for the defense to line up to make your play calls. And when you're going to run that style of offense, a lot of people think it's maybe grab bag or a lot of people think you're just flying by the seat of your pants and calling plays. You're really not. You're calling plays based on formations that you think you're going to get certain looks out of from the defense. You're just not using a check with me system to confirm the look to call that play. Okay, so if you're going to be an up-tempo play caller and use up-tempo philosophies, what you have to understand is you have to have some package concepts in there that can kind of help defend yourself or keep yourself out of bad plays by having some built-in reads you can make off of certain players so that you can have more than one option to go to if you call a certain play. You know, you also have to live by the sword and die by the sword and understand that sometimes when you're playing that fast, you're going to have some bad plays on first down. Okay, but if your idea is to play fast to cause disruption from the play calling aspect of the defense, the, substitu the substitution personnel aspect of the defense, and to try and get defenders on the other team that may be a little bit better than you to try and get them tired to where maybe the talent level gets a little bit more even, you have to understand that you're going to live and die by that philosophy. So what we started looking into and, and watching 
you know, and the best teams in college and the NFL start doing it, we started looking into running some packages that we could put together with things that we already run that gave our team, you know, simple options to say, all right, well, we're going to look at a certain defender, and if he does this, we're going to run this play, but if he does that, we're going to come back to another play. And, you know, there's a lot of different methods and a lot of different theories out there. There's a lot of good plays that are being drawn up and a lot of good concepts that are, that are, that are uh, people are coming up with. And, you know, you got to keep in mind it's got to fit your offense. It's got to fit your personality, okay? And you probably can't do every single one of them. So you have to figure out which ones you think can be most successful for you. So what I want to do today is look at some packages that, that we run, all right? And some of these things are, are off of concepts that we've already talked about in previous videos. So the concepts themselves aren't new, but we're going to take a look at how we can put two things together and, and come up with package plays that allow us to play at an up-tempo, fast, fast pace, but also allow us to kind of protect ourselves to stay out of bad plays, you know, if we're getting certain looks or, you know, if we're getting the, de the, the defense maybe doing something that we didn't account for, or even as simple as just conflicting one defender, all right, that we talked about in a previous video about conflicting defenders, and, and if we can conflict that guy and say, hey, if he does this, we're going to run this play, but if he does something else, we're going to go back to the other side with another play. All right, so it's really just a way of teaching, you know, your quarterback and your offense to understand that we're going to have some good plays called based on the reaction of the defense rather than we're going to have some good plays called based on the alignment of the defense. Okay, so first one we're going to take a look at is one of the, you know, one of the base standards in our dropback passing game. It's the three-man scat concept. Some people call it the snag play, all right, but for us, basically, it's one of the standards in our passing game. We talked about it in a previous video. A lot of the tags, I like it because there's certain tags that you can build in and really make the play dynamic. All right, we're going to look at two of the different things that we do off of this play. And first one we're going to look at is running a backside screen off of a frontside snag concept. Okay, so. And for today's sake, I've been getting a lot of uh, been getting a lot of emails and a lot of comments on guys wanting to see more stuff to five, two, three, four teams. So for sake of today's argument, what we're going to do is we're going to look at we'll look at some odd fronts and and how we can protect against those odd fronts and you know just draw it up against something a little bit different than your standard even front. All right, so what we're going to look at is we're going to look at front side snag concepts, all right, where number one is on the snag route, number two is on the 10-yard corner, and number three is push, pushing leverage to the flat, all right? And for us, what we would generally do when we are running that type of concept, all right, is to the play side, the first uncovered man would start to turn. So for us, we'd be big on big right here. All right, and then since the guard's uncovered, he will start to turn back. All right, and what we will create is we will create a four-man zone side now. And now my offensive lineman will account for one, two, three, and four. All right, the problem with the with the three-four base fifty Oki front. All right, the reason it's so successful for defenses is it's hard to tell who the fourth rusher is going to be. All right, it's hard to tell where they're going to bring that fourth guy from. All right, so you know for us a lot of the times. Um, what, what we have to do is we turn the protection back and then we account for the front side to inside to outside linebackers, all right, by releasing a player into, all right, the route and then building in some hot throws off of, all right, one of those linebackers blitzing. Okay, one of the downsides to using half slide protection and not free man out stuff versus 50 front teams, all right, is a lot of times in this Oki front, if they bring this guy off the edge and just run a slant angle, old school Michigan slant angle, all right, where they slant away from the Sam and bring him. A lot of times we throw hot, okay, into a four man rush, which is really not a blitz or a pressure. It's really just a standard four man deal. But for us in our half slide, because this Sam linebacker comes, we end up throwing hot. So one of the things we do to alleviate that a little bit, okay, is we can change this up by putting two backs in the backfield, all right, and now we can put another back in the backfield to give us a third guy in the route to push the flat so we have that snag concept with 
snag corner flat, and then we can keep our tail back front side, all right, double read inside to outside. So now that if they only come with a fourth rusher from that side, all right, we don't have to throw hot into four man pressures with them dropping seven guys in coverage. All right, so that's just a little game plan type deal. When you're playing 50 teams or three, four teams, you got to understand where they like to bring the fourth guy from. All right, probably multiple most of the time, but if you can dictate they bring him from the field or it's a certain guy on their team they like to rush, most teams, especially in high school, there's going to be a fourth rusher coming from somewhere 95% of the time. There aren't a lot of high school teams that can live in a two-gap defense against the run, and there aren't a lot of high school teams that can live all right, rushing three and dropping eight in coverage all the time. So usually, generally speaking, you're going to get a fourth rusher. It's your job as a coach when you're studying film. It's your job as a coach to understand how to account for that. Okay, But that's just one of the ways right there, putting uh, another back in the backfield to get your third man to the front side and then play side double reading your tailback all right, is, is one way to account for it. All right, but just to go back to our original theory, not talking about blitz pickup, not talking about protection. We're just talking about package concepts right now. All right, we would get the tailback out to push leverage to the flat. Okay, and what we would do is we would run three-man scat on the front side, and we would tag it with a screen on the back side. Okay, so what we would do is we would take the H and we would push him out and up to the corner. Okay, and then what we would do is we would take our interior three linemen and we would pass protect first for a two count and then we would release out on screen so what we would do is we would take this front side guard on, on the screen side now he would pass protect for two and then what he's going to do is he's going to run the alley all the way to the sideline all right he's going to be the sidewalk guy that's running okay out and trying to block the first thing that shows towards the sideline we take the center and he would pass protect for a two count okay and then he would run the alley all right, in between the sidewalk player, all right, and now the backside, what we call the rat kill or the wall player, all right, he would run the alley and try and become a lead blocker for, okay, the, the player running the screen. We would take the backside guard, all right, and we would try and take him and we would run him on what we call a wall, so he would be trying to go pass protect 1 1000, 2 1000, and then we would release him to see if we could wall off anything from the backside, okay. All right, and then you could also, with that backside guard, or you could incorporate the backside tackle, you could use a guy as a rat kill player, and what that would mean is you could take this guy, and instead of running a wall concept, you could take him flat down the line and try and pin back for anything that might be showing from inside out following the screen. Okay, so you got two different ways you can do it. You can run the backside guard on the wall and then you could take the backside tackle and see if you can get him to rat kill. I've seen it done both ways, all right? I've seen some NFL teams do it with this backside tackle where they use him to rat kill. We've done it both ways as well. For me in high school though, generally speaking, all right, you know, again, remember you have to coach the level you're at. So for me in high school, generally speaking, I like leaving my tackles on in a lot of our screen game because I like assuring that I'm going to get pass rush from those defensive ends, okay? So we would have guard, center, guard, okay? And again, simple terminology here, we would go sidewalk, okay? With the front, the first play side guard on the screen would go sidewalk, the center would go alley, okay? And then the back side guard would go wall. So when we talk to those guys and we do screen drills, we simply say, hey, we're working sidewalk, alley, wall. All right, sidewalk, alley, wall. And there's a lot of different terminology coaches use, whatever you feel comfortable with teaching your players, but you've got to have a landmark that they can go to. All right, it's very tough to block screens blocking men. It's very tough to tell your lineman, all right, you got the will, you got the mic, you got to go out and get the sand. Number one, a lot of your high school linemen may not even know who the will, the mic, and the Sam in a certain defense are. And number two, they may not stay that way. So what we try and do is we try and give our guys landmarks to, to run to, and when you're doing screen drills, we'll set up bags or cones, whatever dummies, all right? And, and when you're doing screen drills, you say, hey, sidewalk, what's the first thing that shows? Kick it out, okay? Alley, what's the first thing that shows inside the sidewalk? Turn it up, all right? Wall, get out flat, turn it up inside the hash mark. You know, you may, if you want to use landmarks if the ball's in the middle of the field, all right, you may want to say, hey, the sidewalk, you've got to work, all right, the numbers to the sideline, 
okay? And then the alley player, you may want to work, okay? You may want to work the hash mark, okay? And then the wall player, you, wanna, you may want to work on a goal post, all right? If you wanted to use landmarks. The only problem with landmarks is you don't always run the play from the middle of the field. So if it's into the boundary, that's going to change slightly. Okay, you can, you can get away with using those landmarks and living with it, but it changes a little bit when, when the ball moves and the ball's not always in the middle. But anything you feel like, any coaching points, you can help get your kids where they belong. Whether it be buzzwords like sidewalk, alley, wall, or landmarks like, you know, number sideline, hash mark, goal post, whatever you feel like can work. I'm not saying that those are the best. I'm not saying that they're, you know, that they're the way you absolutely have to do it. There's probably a better way out there. What I'm saying with the kids that I have in high school that I've taught and I've coached, giving them landmarks and, and words they can remember on screen for their assignments works a lot better. Okay, so we, we constantly talk about sidewalk player, alley player, wall player. If we involve a backside guy, we call that the rat kill. Okay, we call that the clean up rat kill play. All right, so what we are doing here is we are working front side, three men, all right, snag, Front side scat, okay? You're running snag, corner, flat. We are physically protecting this play for two seconds as if we are going to throw the snag concept. Because in this, all right, in this particular defense right here, we're going to take a look at this Mike linebacker, all right? And if he's a guy that's going to open up and get into coverage to the scat side, all right, then we feel like we should have some numbers back to the screen side, okay? If this Mike linebacker is either going to rush or possibly, all right, if, if he were to drop straight back, all right, now we feel like we've got numbers to take advantage of the one underneath coverage player they have if the corner's off, all right. We feel like we've got snag flat advantage on the underneath player, okay. If they were to roll up and give us cover two, all right, and we feel like the corner's going to stay down, with the player showing in the flat, we feel like he can stay down. Well, the quarterback may be able to put his fifth foot in the ground, all right, or on his fifth step, put his foot in the ground, okay, and throw the corner out. So we're going to protect this as if we're throwing three-man scat, okay. If we don't get a blitz and we don't have to throw hot, and the Mike linebacker or the conflicted player, all right, does, does something that we don't like that takes away our numbers, okay, now we're going to come back, okay, so we're going to be, for us out of the gun, it would be a three-step drop, but it's a five-step passing theory. So we would drop normal here, all right, we would drop and set. If we like the scat side, we're going to throw the ball right now when that last step hits the ground. There can't be a bunch of hit steps in here or a hitch and hold. Your quarterback can't get to his last foot and hitch and hold onto it because your linemen are releasing for screen. So your quarterback has to understand at the back of his drop, when that last foot hits, he's got to be able to hitch and release with no hitch, I'm sorry, release that ball on his plant foot, release that ball out to snag, flat, or corner. you got to teach your quarterbacks that when you're running a package screen concept, I can't sit there and hitch and hold back foot first up into the pocket to let that play develop because my linemen are leaving. So he's got to have an internal clock that says, look, when I drop, all right, and my last foot on my drop hits the ground. If I like the scat side, I can deliver the football. If I don't like the scat side for whatever reason, all right, now I had better start to retreat and get in a position to throw the screen pass. All right, and in two by two, the screen would come back to the X receiver here. All right, fast hands, fast feet, sell a vertical, bring it back down in here, and we try and get it back down inside and follow right up the alley. We're trying to create a kick out, an alley, and a wall to give ourselves all right, a seam to run that screen up in. Okay? You can run this out of three by one and you can run it to a tailback. You can do the same thing in three by one or two back. You can do the same thing, all right, and you can run the same type concept and use a tailback in the screen play. So let's say we've got all right, our three by one set out here. All right, let's say we got our three by one set here, okay, and we are going to run snag, corner, flat there. 
All right, we're going to be big on big. He's covered now, not like the odd front. I drew up an even front. He's covered, so he stays. First uncovered lineman starts the turn. Okay, so now we've got our base protection in. What we're going to do with the tailback now is we're going to put him on the back side of the protection, okay, here. All right, you could do it two different ways now. You could put him on the back side of the protection, okay, and release him for the screen. Or you could put him on the front side to double read, okay, front side here to double read one of these blitzers and then put him out to the screen. We found in high school with our kids, all right, Releasing him away from the side that he's screening to is definitely a better concept and better for disguise, but we found for our kids it was a lot better to just release him to the screen side for us. And again, remember, coach the level you're at, all right? I think releasing him away from the screen side was better for the disguise of the play, but releasing him to the screen side was actually better for us as far as the kids that we were running to play with. So we put him in protection here. All right, and then remember, all right, remember now you're going to take, you're going to take your front side guard to the screen side. He's going to protect, and then he's going to run, all right, the sidewalk. Your center is going to protect, and he's going to run the alley. Your back side guard is going to protect, and then he's going to try and run and be the wall. Okay, your tailback is going to step up here into protection and try and disguise himself and hide behind the lineman. Never release until at least your first lineman has gone towards the sidewalk. You can't get out in the screen before your lineman. So he tries to hide. He times it up when his guard tries to go to the sidewalk. All right, he's going to sneak right out here into the flat. We're going to drop back with our quarterback here, read the three-man scat side. If we like it, we throw it. If we don't, we come back here and we throw the tailback screen. Okay, another little adjustment you can make because you have a sidewalk player, when you're running a single side, you can take the single side receiver and see if you can bring him down in here to crack, whether it be a drop down safety or a safety plane, maybe some type of stress or trap concept where he's looking for three vertical and when three doesn't go vertical, he just kind of defends the middle of the field or he finds work. All right, so to a single receiver, you can wrinkle this a little bit and bring him down here to crack and see if your guard can get on this corner to the sidewalk. All right, a lot of nice little wrinkles within the blocking schemes you can do there. But there's a two-by-two two package concept where you've got scat to the front side, screen to the back side, two-by-two two where you're throwing it to a receiver, three-by-one where you're throwing it to a tailback. Okay, so those are very simply, you know, package concepts where you can run a five-step concept here with a screen here. So as an up-tempo team, when you know you're trying to play fast, I don't have to just come out and call a screen, and if they don't rush the passer or if it's not a good look for me, the screen gets blown up. Okay, I can call a five-step pass one way with a screen the other way, and now I've built in some options, all right, for my quarterback and for my offensive players so that if we're trying to call that play and snap the ball within 13 or 12 or 15 seconds, okay, when we do that, we obviously didn't check with me. We didn't check to see the front or the coverage. So now we've got to be able to run that against anything we see. And now we've built in some options for our offensive players to try and keep us maybe out of a bad play. All right, so that's just one simple concept where you've got, all right, you've got a five-step concept on the front side with a screen on the back side. All right. Next one I'm going to take a look at here, okay, is one we used to run a couple years back. And I started to see some more college teams going back to it, so I think we're going to go back to it as well. All right. Next one we're going to talk about here is a bootleg waggle. Okay. I use the term waggle. My quarterback is naked all the time out in front of the waggles. I don't use guards to escort them or, or protect them. Um, so we're talking about a waggle away from a three-step concept. Okay. So the package is three-step front side, waggle back side. All right. And what we're going to do. Okay, is we're going to come out and we can do it out of two by two, we can do it out of three by one. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to come out and we are going to go ahead and try and throw a hitch route to the play side, number one receiver. All right, so on the play side, we are going to have a hitch route by our strong side, play side, number one receiver. We are going to throw that hitch route until they take it away. Okay? It, we're not going to read it. We're not going to sight adjust it. We're not going to change the route on the fly. That will be hitched no matter what the coverage is. 
We're going to throw it until they take it away. At the point that they take that route away, then we're going to build the wagon lane. So because this is quick game for us, we're going to full slide it, play side, here. We're going to take our back and we're going to attack away from the slide. Now, the big coaching point here is when we block our full slide, we give our tailback 100 miles an hour license to miss with your helmet inside. Go attack the C-gap with your helmet tight to the inside, okay? Understand that the tackle is stepping down, so you've got to be tight to where he's stepping to, not where he is. Do not get beat across your face. You can miss that block and whiff if you're going 100 miles an hour with your head on the inside. It's okay to whiff on that block in three-step. When we go three-step waggle package, now your, your, your running back has to have his helmet outside of that end, okay? Now he's got to have his helmet outside, okay? And that end will help you a lot of times with that block because when you're running a bunch of three-step full slide and you're grabbing the ball at the quarterback and punching and throwing the ball really quick, when that defensive end sees that a lot, sometimes he likes to duck inside Okay, even though he's taught not to duck inside, he likes to duck inside because you're getting rid of that ball so quick. He feels like when that quarterback sets up the throw, the only chance he has to get there is to duck inside. So a lot of times when we get full slide, okay, with a back attacking real hard right here, sometimes this guy will try and peek his head inside, which makes it a lot easier. But you got to understand your running back must put his helmet outside that defensive end when you're running the three-step waggle concept. Okay. So what we would do is we would throw three steps strong and we'll throw it all day all right, until they take it away. And then we'll build in a flood three level concept on the backside for the wagon. Okay. So we'll take, all right, we'll take two and we'll run them on a corner. We'll take one and we'll run a return route. We'll come all the way down inside and return back out to the flat. And then we'll take this backside, all right, this backside slot here and we'll run the drag or the climbing route across the field. All right, there, quarterback opens to step, punch step, throw the hitch. If the hitch is not there, he spins out and he runs waggle. Okay, and what I mean by that is if, if I was looking to the right, I would punch, step, I would go to throw my three-step concept. If my three-step concept is not there and I'm going to waggle, I want to spin, okay, I want to spin out by taking my back foot in the ground and now spin out into the waggle, all right? What you don't want to do is you don't want to go to throw three-step this way and then open back into the waggle because you're too tight. If there's any pressure there, you're going to get hit, all right, right in the grill with that pressure coming. So you want to step to throw the three-step here. If it's not there, you're going to spin out to run the waggle, all right? So he physically turns his back and spins out and away to buy time okay in case there's any pressure coming in he cannot open face first if I'm going waggle three step to my right waggle left I cannot go quick game here and then open right back into my waggle alright I have to be able to spin out of that to alleviate any pressure coming so I would spin out to run the waggle alright and then I've got three levels here I've got a level on top level in the flat third intermediate level coming from the backside okay so we are going to come out and we are going to look here all day long. And we are going to throw that ball until they take it away. If we have the concept called and they take it away, we're going to turn it into a way. Okay, we'll turn it into a way. Now, how does that help you up tempo? We're not check with me here, so we don't know the coverage to the hit side. And we're not converting that route. So if we come up and we get a hard, aggressive jam, cover two or press corner, okay, we're not going to convert the route. We're just going to go and run the waggle the other way. All right, so it's a package concept built in three-step waggle together where now you know if you get some type of coverage that you really don't like on the front side, you can turn it into a waggle on the back side. All right, so as an up-tempo team that's trying to play really fast, you don't know what the coverages are. It's not check with me. If I came out check with me and this kid was up here and I wanted to throw a quick game, I would throw a slant or fade or something by him. All right, but when you're not running check with me, you're running up-tempo stuff, you've got to understand to have an answer. And the answer to that is, all right, play fast and have another package built in if the coverage isn't conducive to the throw you want to make. Okay? If you were to do it out of three-step, I'm sorry, out of three-by-one, okay, what we would do, and this sets up real nicely if you've got a good single receiver catching a lot of man-to-man, -man, all right, what we would do if it were three-by-one, 
All right, what we would do is we would take our three-step concept Alright, what we would do is we would throw our three-step concept to the single. So we'd come out here and run hitch to the single. Okay, our line would block to the side of the hitch. Play side for us. Full slide. Our running back would attack 100 miles an hour with his helmet now outside the defensive end. Big coaching point. Helmet outside on the package waggle. Helmet inside on quick game three-step. Helmet outside on three-step waggle. All right, and now we would say, all right, to this side, one is going to run the return, two is going to run the corner, and now three, instead of being a backside drag, three is on the front side, and we need that intermediate level, so we just run the sail, all right, out cut there, all right, to give us the third level, and now again, we have three levels there that we're breaking down. We've got one over the top, we've got one in the flat, we've got one you know, probably 10 to 12 on the outcut here. Make sure this guy stays at about three yards here so that you're not in the same window. We go one step, boom, right now to the hitch. If the hitch isn't there, okay, if the hitch isn't there, again, we like to, even though it's front side opening to it, I like my quarterbacks to spin, all right, even though some people will look at you and go, well, why do you do that? You're turning your back on the side you're throwing to. Well, if you were waggling from under center, if you can imagine this, if I was under center and I was faking a handoff to this side and I was going to waggle back that way, my back is already turned from under center. So what's the difference now if I want to waggle that way, I punch here, I go to throw three-step, it's not there, and now I spin out to run my waggle, okay? A lot of people look and go, well, you're turning your back, it's a little bit unconventional, but what you're doing by spinning out is you're creating depth and distance away from edge pressure. If you open, if I go three step here, three steps not there, and I go to open back straight into the waggle, I'm flat and any pressure is in my face right now. Okay? When you're under center, you create distance away from the edge and away from pressure by reaching hard out to your play action where it is, and after your play action, you go three steps to the opposite goal line, hide the football, and then waggle. Okay? When you're in the shotgun, your depth is already here. There's no other way to create it. So what we like to do is spin out, take your three-step, it's not there, you can even give a shoulder fake, no three-step, spin out, get some depth here, and now attack to the front side, and go to your three levels, obviously peak at the home run first, and then go high-low on your 10 to 12 yard sail and your flat route, okay? And again, what you're doing is you're building a little package concept in where you got quick game front side, waggle back side, okay? You're, you're still using the same theories as an under center quarterback. An under center quarterback on bootlegs or waggles turns his back to the side he's throwing. He always opens this way and then waggles back, or if he opens this way, he's going to waggle back the other way. His back is turned, so don't let anybody in the shotgun tell you that turning your back or spinning out looks awkward, awkward or it's unconventional. No, it's actually what the guy from under center does. It's the same thing. Okay, so a quarterback who looks three-step here, and then spins out to waggle, he's doing the same thing an under-center quarterback would if he was going play action or something this way and a waggle that way. It's the same action. Okay, so sometimes in the shotgun people see quarterbacks that spin out and they don't like it. They say, no, it's not conducive. It doesn't look good. It's awkward. Well, look at a guy under-center and tell me how he does it, and you'll find that on bootlegs and waggles it's the same thing. Okay, so those are just two simple packages off the things that are already in. We did a video on three-step last year, so off of your three-step game, there's a waggle built in. Off of your uh, three-man scat concept or snag concept, there's a package with snag front side, screen back side. All right? As an up-tempo football team, you have to be able to run some different packages so that you can protect yourself as a play call. You're not running check with me systems. Now, we still do a version of check with me all right, where we freeze at the line and we try and change the cadence and the tempo on the other team, but we don't live and die by check with me. We live and die by up-tempo, rapid pace, all right, rapid play call where we're trying to affect the defensive coordinator's play calls, affect the personnel, and we're trying to wear out that team that we're playing by playing much, much faster.
All right, so we will do check with me, we just don't live and die by it. So if you are playing at an extremely fast pace, you have to be able to have package concepts, things that can go hand in hand with one another to where you can make simple reads and have what you feel like, all right, are good options against different looks on defense so you feel like you don't have a bad play call. All right, if anybody's out at the uh, Nike Orlando this week or Tampa Glacier in two weeks, if you're in the Florida area, I'll be down there. All right, if I run into anybody, I'd love to say hello to some of you guys. We'll be getting some great emails and some great comments on some of the video. The interaction is the best part. All right, again, I don't ask, not all of the emails or, or all of the comments are always in agreement or agreement. There are some people who actually disagree, and that's fine. That's what the interactions and the discussions are about. This is how we choose to play football. This is how we choose to coach it. All right, and, you know, it, it's like anything else. When it's good, it's good. When it's bad, it's bad. You can argue one way or the other. When we've been successful, obviously, you feel like it's the right way to go. When you're not successful, then obviously people feel like it's the wrong way to go. All right, but for me as a high school coach, this is what I feel like suits me, fits my personality, and I think it's one of the easiest ways, regardless of your scheme, whether you're an I team, a wing T team, option team, it doesn't matter. Tempo is not affected by scheme, and tempo is not affected by talent. Anybody can do it. I think this is one of the ways to get the playing fields a little bit level or back to even in the second half. All right, I appreciate you guys checking us out, and as always, you won't play well until you play fast.